Clayton Oliver's been a big story uh, all year, and he's form. He's in a form slump, hasn't he? So he's right in the spotlight at the moment. What's the latest with Melbourne's Clayton Oliver? It's Macca? the biggest form slump of his career so yep. far. But off the field, mm. he's actually happier than he's been for quite some time. So I can tell you, as we sit here right tonight, the talk of a, a Clayton Oliver trade at the end of this year to yep. a new club is effectively dead in the water. Now yeah. these things can change, but at the moment he's quite happy with uh, where he's at. With the, he's not happy with his form. There's no doubt yeah. about that. But he's happy with where he's at. So you're Melbourne, talking about the personal issues that play. Yep. Him over summer yep. that led to serious He's talks made about his serious future. ground. Yeah, serious ground in regard to that. So that means that Melbourne and Clayton uh, remain committed to to a long term relationship. We yeah. know it's a mm. long term the relationship. Yeah, we've fallen back in love again. That's what they Oliver have in, says in, in a lot are, of ways. Yeah, you, you know why they're mm. going well. You know why he and uh, Melbourne are going well because Melbourne are answering their phones again mm. across the whole summer. Radio yeah. silence. But you say, how are you going? Form's not great. And they say, Macca, yeah. oh, Clayton's going so well. Yeah. And imagine if they did trade him and it became Brody Grundy, Mark II. There's, there's absolutely no way they trade him. I, yeah. I think clubs will dangle the carrot. They, and they I've, are. I've there's spoken no to three clubs over the last 48 hours. They are all watching this Clayton mm-hmm. Oliver situation so closely. So Oliver may be happy at Melbourne and everything you hear out of Simon Goodwin's mouth, they're loving Clayton Oliver. There are clubs just skirting around the edges. You mentioned Geelong before. Absolutely. Tell me Clayton Oliver... Mm isn't absolutely perfect for yeah. that. Their contested possession rates drop, their clearances are dropped, they don't have that big bodied midfielder. That's what Clayton Oliver is. So if this takes a turn, mm-hmm. there will be clubs doing their due diligence because you've got to be in a position to know what is happening in the background with Clayton Oliver. And things can turn, but at the moment things are good. The last year of his contract stretches out to like 1.4 or something like yep. that, so it's a big yep. deal. But at the moment he's very happy, happy and, and he looks he's keen to stay. Yep. He's got that, that, hand, that finger issue is causing problems still though. What, well, can you tell us about that there was some vision mm. I think yeah. we saw in game at the weekend was, where yeah. you've got some treatment on it yeah. um, was it 10 stitches can you tell us a bit more about he did. that he had a real issue he had the surgery we know didn't miss a game which is quite he's an incredibly strong player in that sense yep. so he's still carrying that yep. as a real problem at the moment so it's yep. affecting his form a little yep. bit so is the tag but he can turn that around and while they're conceding that it's going to be hard to get yep. your fitness base back again in full pre-season, he'll be back again. Yeah, he's 26 year, years of age. It's laughable Correct. to think that he can't get back into yep. his best form at some mm. stage. It's the so, first yep. form slump of his career. He'll be fine. Massive game against Brisbane. You'll catch it live, mm. of course, on Fox Footy. <laughs> Harley Reid, um, he is going to be a rich man. What is the latest on his contract situation? I know about my acting career. I think it's died <laughs> in the tracks there. Hey, um, Harley Reid could accept the biggest deal in football history if he wanted to in three years. So there's a lot of talk about that fourth year deal. Clarky, you've talked about West Coast yep. trying to secure him as much as 1.5 million bucks. Yep. That has to compensate him for being basically screwed over for those first three years of a mandatory three-year like deal. Like every other player is. Of course. Is. So I think the expectation, though, is if they are to re-sign him, it would be at $2 million. That's the deal to compensate Whoa. him. Ooh. Clubs have indicated to his management that they would be prepared to go $18 million over 10 years. Say that, that again. Eight. Victorian clubs, wow. $18 million, 10 years. Now, that's, that's an indication. Yeah. That's it, it, you could say it's laughable until you consider that in 2020, 2017, uh, but Dustin Martin signed for seven years mm. at one point three million. You know, Buddy Franklin ten years, uh, ten uh, million nine years. Nine so years, yeah, yeah. Salary caps have increased. They of have. course they have. Yeah. So I still think that he doesn't want to do that. The smart option is for him to get financial security, tuck the fourth year in, so he'll earn about mm. three million bucks over four years, yeah. as you should, and then you get the massive payday then at West Coast, whack, yeah. or you consider the rival offer. In a word, who has the biggest crack? Which Victorian club has the biggest crack? If you could put it in a time well, capsule. Essendon always Essendon. has the biggest crack. That's where he trained Good before news. he Good was stuff. drafted. Ralphie, prediction time. Macca, um, you've got a big call on the Bombers. What is that? I have. Mean? The good news keeps coming for the Bombers in a lot of ways. And mm. I'm going to predict that within two weeks, uh, there'll be some exciting news that uh, young midfielder Jai Caldwell yep. will sign a two-year... Uh, no, sorry. He'll sign a, a new deal that yep. could be between two and four. They're just sort of talking about the uh, the tenure and how long it will be at the moment. But, but locked in. Bombers, locked in. Very good. Uh, signature will come. Bombers are very happy with the way He's will going. he will he play in a winning final this season, Mac? Well, a question with that notice. No, I think <laughs> or I know. No, no, he will. Do, uh, Essendon okay. will win uh, win a final. I don't know where they finish on the ladder, but they will win a final. We're that aware long of the history <laughs> is over. You're trying to dig into the first time in 20 years. This midfield is stacked, isn't it? I know there's talk about now Darcy Parrish coming back from that calf injury. He's a month away, also an expecting father. He walks into that midfield. There's no doubt about that. I know a lot of emerging types. He would take uh, Kelly's spot. He would take Cox's spot. I've got no doubt about that. You can rotate on the wing, but Parrish you look back on last year's numbers, 2023, 7.7 clearances a game on average. Mm. The next best, Zach Merritt, on 4.5. So he'll win the hard ball. And I think they've actually missed him uh, in that spot. So he walks back in, yeah. I think, Darcy Parrish. Uh, I think he gets back in. Uh, Dylan Shields had to play so much VFL football. He played 10 minutes as a sub and then they put, sent him back 
exactly there again. So, look, 20... You reckon Scotty you brings him back to the VFL? Oh, absolutely. VFL. So, of, Parrish... all, of all the fancy stats here, he's had 24 <laughs> no, touches a game John. this year. <laughs> Come on, and he's Robbie. had four score involvements. <laughs> and so... People at Essendon will tell you, we love the way he gets it. He's elite. He's not elite with his kicking. And so that that midfield connection, midfield four connection, has improved a lot. If he had to play a couple of games in the VFL to get himself cherry ripe and to work on his disposal, I think that would be a really a brave but also a smart call. We might have to have a, a bet. I'm not predicting that. Can of solo. <laughs> That's Darcy prediction. Parrish here yeah, playing VFL. Uh, Mac, we mentioned Bailey Smith uh, mm. off the top of the show. He is one of the most talked about footballers, most marketable uh, figures in the game. Um, you've got some news on his whereabouts because <laughs> under the radar he's skipped out of the country. Very much so, hasn't he? I can tell you tonight he's uh, he's sunning himself in the Greek Isles. Wouldn't that be a nice little destination to go to? But he flies back to Melbourne. Yep. He'll be back into Melbourne on the weekend. Here we go. Look at this he's footage. Kicking the footy. Here. Kicking the footy. Moving pretty well there, I've got to say. Industry sources will tell you that Geelong has a desire to add that pacey, mature age midfielder and the surf coast has got a bit of appeal. We won't yep. talk cotton on or anything like that, but uh, surf coach has got that appeal. Collingwood's long been linked to, we've yep. spoken about it here. Um, Where do they sit? To Bailey, sit, to Bailey Smith as well. Their, their 2024 draft hand is going to be the biggest concern. That's why yep. the situation with there is drying up a little bit. They're going to have to give so a future... So you don't for, think Collingwood? I think it's less likely to be Collingwood yep. now than it, than it is Geelong yep. um, in that sense. I wouldn't rule out Hawthorne yep. in, in that sense. So Hawthorne can get a deal done. Can Collingwood get a deal done? That's the, that's the question mark. Do, do they want to get a deal done? Yeah, I mean that, that, you, everything you hear from them is that you know that they want to mm. all of a sudden bring young, elite talent in yep. I've given up, you told us, what, five or six draft picks, first have. draft picks over the Correct. years. Um, and they like players like the Whitlock twins, who are key position forwards and backs. So oh, you can't yeah. discount Collingwood in any you way, can't. because no, he might say, change. I need to play with Nick and Josh Dacos. Mm. But I think they're huge outsiders right now. So, yeah. Maki, you think uh, Geelong, I don't think you could discount Hawthorne at this stage no, no, either. Agree. I think there's a close link there. Not the Bulldogs, though. We can say that for certainty he's, almost, I think. Definitely Joey. gone. And potential some speculation, you said that this has been done for some time. Well, yeah, the interesting thing is, speaking to a few people uh, in the last 24 <laughs> hours, some people have been suggesting that this may have, may have been done like two years ago. Yep. Um, which is fascinating it's if it had long-term been. Long-term deal. Wasn't yeah. this rig just glistening nicely <laughs> too in that rig? <laughs> He's uh, going all right. Son, I like the pictures there. <laughs> what about Tommy Brass's future? So, one key bulldog out at the kennel. Mm -hmm. uh, Ralphie, can you crystal ball this and see potentially who could come in? And if it's a, a, a straight swap in this regard... I think Bulldogs fans might be happy. Yeah, so we wrote a couple of weeks back, or a couple of months back, that um, the dogs are really heavily into Tom Brass. But, you know, would they be able to get the deal done? You know, I think they absolutely knew that uh, Bailey uh, was going. Mm -hmm. So that's why they gave up 10-7 mm -hmm. in that future first for Riley Sanders, who's coming along nicely. He's the inside mid that Bailey potentially wasn't the last couple of years. So if it is they get pick six from Hawthorne or they get a future first or whatever it is, you trade that for a Tom Brass who's turning 29. And I, I think, Mac, we wrote, wrote in tomorrow's paper, yeah. made some calls. I think he's open to at least considering it. So you've got Liam Jones, you've got Tom Barash, you've got an elite midfield. Oh, they desperate, the Bulldogs desperately need a, a, a player of uh, Tom Brass to stiffen that whole back. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're playing they... Frazier there, they're playing yeah. Luca Camus, Ford mm. and back. It couldn't agree. Right, Bulldogs fans yeah. watching this now think out Bailey Smith in Tom Barras. I'd imagine that's a huge win. We've got Marcus Bontempelli, mm. Jamara Eagle yep. Hagen, Aaron Norton back in the team. They win now. Oh, yeah. And Tom Barras is win Absolutely. now. And, and it's not a full top up only for the future because you've brought in players like Harvey Gallagher and you know we know they've got so much excitement there with their young key forward. So mm. um, it's the perfect time for them to give up a first rounder for a bloke who might only have four or five years left.